in one second, the sun churns out more energy than humans have ever created in the entire history of mankind. So it's time to look at solar energy as an option to provide our electricity and our energy needs here on Earth. There's two types of energy systems, passive solar energy and active solar energy. And the simple difference is that active systems use machinery and use mechanisms. All right, these are this is pretty much what we think of when you think of solar energy. Uh, we think of photovoltaic cells or solar cells, solar panels. That would be an active system because it uses machinery and mechanics to generate energy. All right, but passive systems are a little bit different. They're more strategic. All right, they're more strategies that are used uh, to insulate homes or to uh, take advantage of natural sunlight coming in through windows and trying to you know utilize that energy to heat your home right there's no mechanisms involved it's more or less strategies a good example is having windows on your house that are south facing so that you're maximizing the amount of solar energy coming into your home in the winter time and then you have to rely a little bit less on heating your house with uh, tr conventional traditional heating methods like burning oil. All right, so those are passive systems, non-mechanical, uh, more or less strategies. So those are the two types of systems that we can begin to. All right, let's start here with solar power plants. Now, when you think of solar cells and solar panels, that's more or less result reserved for personal use, um, maybe community use, small-scale power generation. But we're going to start here with this discussion of active solar technologies with uh, actual power plants. And a, a solar power plant is called a solar thermal power plant. All right, what we mean here is that we're going to use the heat energy of the sun to generate electricity. All right, and there's a couple of different ways we can do that. And these power plants are all located in the desert to maximize the amount of sun, sunlight and sun's energy. Um, to do this. So with this first model here we use a series of parabolic mirrors to focus the sun's energy and the sun's heat to a pipe. All right, so we're going to run water through this pipe and the sun's energy being focused to that pipe is going to heat that pipe which will heat the water which will turn that water to steam which can then be used to turn a turbine and generate electricity. So solar thermal power plants use the same methods as other power plants where we're going to turn water to steam to turn a turbine to generate electricity. Okay, The difference here is that we're not really burning anything. We're concentrating sunlight to a tube or a tower or a receiver in the other two models. We're not burning anything so there's literally no emissions. There's very little impact when it comes to solar thermal power plants. All right, so that first model is just one model of three for solar thermal power plants. So if we take a look at this second model here, what well, we have uh, something called a heliostat, which is a series of mirrors. And these heliostats, and the word helio means sun, uh, static means it's stationary, it stays put. However, these are controlled by computers and the heliostats can actually move across the sky with the sun all day long. So their job is to reflect light and heat energy to a tower that's nearby. All right, and in that tower is where we're going to run a pipe with cold water and then once it gets to the top of the tower that water will heat up, turn to steam, which will then be hooked up to a turbine and a generator to generate electricity. All right, so here we're focusing the sun's energy to a receiver where it will then transfer that heat to water. In the third model here, we have just a little bit different, but the same concept. We're using a dish style reflector to reflect it to a receiver, which is going to collect that energy and transport it uh, somewhere nearby to where it can boil water and turn it to steam to generate electricity. So that's a little bit about solar thermal power plants and how they work. We're looking at that style here where the sun's energy is reflected and focused and concentrated onto a pipe. And within that pipe is running water, which is boiled and turns to steam. There's fields of these things located in the American Southwest that can generate a lot of energy on a uh, utility scale. All right, and here's the second type, and these are fascinating. 
all these heliostats move across the sky and they're computer operated so that they can reflect light to this tower and then a pipe comes up here and that water is heated up and then is boiled, turns to steam, turns to turbine, generates electricity. But you can think about some of the cons of this situation. All right, so, you know, what if it's cloudy? All right, of course, you're not going to generate uh, energy if it's cloudy or the sun's not out, but we put these things in the desert, and that's the reason why, because there's 90% uh, of the days in the desert are without clouds. Um, what about the nighttime? All right, they've actually figured out this problem. So for the 12 hours that the sun is out, you know, you're generating electricity. But what about for those hours when the sun is not out? All right, here's another one of those tower model power solar thermal power plants. All right, and this image does a good job of explaining just that. They figured out a way to uh, harness that energy so that we can turn water to steam 24 hours a day. All right, so the energy is bounced off the heliostat, focused into a receiver. So a cold water pipe will bring cold water up into the receiver where that water is then heated. Okay, and so for 12 hours during the day, we're generating electricity that way. But what happens when the sun goes down? Well, if we run this pipe through uh, a container full of salt, and usually these salt containers are underground, all right, what's going to happen is that salt is going to heat up all, right, all day long, and it might get really hot, hot enough that overnight that salt will maintain its heat, and then overnight when the sun's not out, we continue to run our water through here, and it'll be the salt that'll transfer its heat energy to the water, which will turn it to steam, which is hooked up to a turbine and a generator, and generates electricity. All right, so now, with the solar, this type of solar thermal power plant, we figured out a way to allow this to work 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. There's other ways you can get these things to work 24 hours a day. You can have a backup system that runs on wind energy or it burns natural gas so that you have a, uh, a combined system where half the day you're generating electricity using the sun and then the other half of the day you're using natural gas or something like that. You can combine energy sources and uh, or biofuels would be a good one. You're b combining uh, renewable energy sources. But nevertheless, we now can do this 24 hours a day with this model. All right, however, it's only in the American Southwest that these options at the utility scale are actually viable. All right, where most people live on the East Coast, we don't have enough average available solar energy to make these things worthwhile. So it's the communities in and around the American Southwest that really benefit from this type of energy generation. Okay, however, if you notice here, there's excellent opportunities for some of these developing countries out there, particularly in the Middle East and in Africa. All right, it'll be those developing countries that, if they take advantage of this way to generate electricity, can really benefit from energy from the sun. All right, at our latitude and with the amount of cloudy days um, that we have, it's, it's only feasible um, in particular areas in the United States, but worldwide uh, developing countries can really benefit from solar thermal power plants. All right, so let's move on to photovoltaic cells and what everybody thinks of when they think of solar energy, All right, otherwise known as solar cells. Okay, and this is another type of active system for collecting solar energy. All right, you can have this on your house. All right, you can also build fields of these things to make it on a little bit more of a commercial scale. All right, the use of photovoltaic cells to generate electricity. All right, here's the how written out. All right, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an image here and talk to you and give you a little tutorial on how these things work. So you can think of a solar cell as being a jelly sandwich, all right, where there's a piece of bread on top, a piece of bread on bottom, and a layer of jelly in between. All right, that's a nice simple way to think about this. All right, and the top piece of bread is called the N layer, all right, and the bottom piece of bread is called the P layer, and in between is called the junction. That would be the jelly of the bread. So here's how this works in a nutshell. As sunlight comes in and hits the top layer, the end layer, these things are made of silicon, 
which have electrons within them. All right, and when the sunlight hits it, an electron is immediately ejected. All right, and when an electron is ejected, it goes down one of these little streets, and it goes down the main street here, and there's a wire connected to this thing, so that electron continues to flow off of the solar panel, off of the end layer, which leaves the top net positive. All right, now nature doesn't want anything net positive. All right, we need to balance that out. So what's going to happen is an electron from the bottom layer is going to jump the junction and replace the lost electron from the top. So when that happens, the bottom then becomes net positive. Well, you can't have that, so our electron that was originally knocked off will continue flowing. All right, as long as you have a wire connected to the bottom, it'll continue flowing back to the bottom to replace that lost electron. So hopefully it makes sense here to you in that as long as sunlight is hitting the top end layer, electrons are being ejected all right, and literally flow. And as an electron from the bottom jumps, that flow continues to replace the lost electron on the bottom. So what we do is we connect our appliances and our light bulbs and anything that needs energy and power on that coil of electron flow. All right, and that's electricity. So that's how an, a photovoltaic cell works. All right, these things are very thin. They're made of silicon. And they work very easily with no emissions. As long as the sun is shining, you have electricity flow. All right, so hopefully that makes sense to you. If you have any questions, um, check out any one of our YouTube videos that are available or come in and ask me, and I can go through this again. But very simple how these things work. All right, so people like to put these on their roofs, all right, away from any obstacles, um, away from any trees that might be growing. And what we need to do is maximize the solar angle to allow the most amount of solar energy to hit these things. So most of the time, you'll see people's solar panels on their homes angled to uh, maximize the solar angle. All right, you want a 90 degree angle whoops, to hit this solar panel. Okay, so during the year, uh, that angle changes. It's, the angle is higher in the sky in the summer and lower in the sky in winter. So you either need to find that average right, to take advantage of the equinox, the, the average sun angle, or you can actually move these things over the course of the year. All right, most people uh, generally try and get the average. All right, solar energy is a growing field. All right. It continues to lack federal subsidies and government support and tax breaks and tax credits and things like that. However, worldwide, it is a growing industry. Okay, Some people estimate that this can supply the world's energy needs up to about 40%, all right, if we let it. Okay, so here you go. Some solar panels to look at. All right, New Jersey is a state that wholeheartedly supports residential use of photovoltaic cells on their homes and businesses. All right, Pennsylvania, not so much. You'll see them dotted around um, certain homes around our area. But if you go to New Jersey, you'll see them on um, telephone poles. You'll see them on people's houses. You'll see them all over. The technology is getting better. Okay, We have... Uh, flexible photovoltaic cells. They're, they've developed um, roof shingles that have photovoltaic capabilities. They have developed uh, photovoltaic cells that are at the nanoscale so that they can include them in things like uh, paints. So you can paint your house with paint that has photovoltaic cells in it. They've even gotten so far as to use these technologies to weave it into the fabric of polymers. So for example, if your sweater or your North Face jacket has nano solar cells inside of it and you go for a jog on a sunny day, you are literally a running small jogging power plant. All right, so the future is bright, no pun intended when it comes to solar energy uh, and the technology is going to get us there if we allow it. All right, and over at the safe house we have 16 photovoltaic cells, all right, solar panels that provide us with energy neutrality. 
All right, we have no electric bill. It takes care of all our energy needs. We have two batteries installed inside of our building that store the energy when we're not using it. And then when we turn on our lights, it's there for us to take advantage of. A system of solar cells for your house isn't just putting up a solar panel. All right, there's a, a system that needs to be in place. And one of the reasons is, is because uh, solar panels generate electricity in DC current. All right, so when the solar energy hits the solar panel, it generates electricity in DC current. Now, all our appliances that we use to plug into a wall socket uh, are an AC current. So somewhere along the line, we need to convert that energy from DC current to AC current. All right, so this is what a system installed in your house might look like. Your solar panel will be on your roof, all right, and that energy gets transferred first to a charge controller. All right, what the controller does is it regulates flow. So what that means is if you're watching TV or using your uh, microwave, as the energy is being collected, let's say a cloud goes in front of the sun. All right, and if you're watching TV, uh, your TV would then power down because it's not collecting energy. It went, the sun went behind a cloud. What the charge controller will do is it will store just enough energy and it'll regulate flow so that you don't lose power. All right, it continues that flow even if a cloud goes in front of the sun or something happens like that. All right, so the charge control is there to regulate flow. From there, the energy will go into a battery all right, in your house and that'll be installed somewhere in your house and then from there the energy when you're ready to use it will flow through the inverter and what that's going to do is convert the DC current into AC so that we can use it all our appliances all our electrical things we use uh, work on AC current okay so you have to have an inverter installed and then we can use the energy all right so this is what a system might look like in a it's not big. It would all be installed somewhere in your basement or in the garage, um, somewhere where it's easy to install. All right, another concept worth talking about is called net metering. And some of you might know someone who's doing this. Now, typically, a solar panel alone or a series of them on your roof will not be enough to accommodate all of your electricity needs okay typically what people do is they'll put a couple solar panels up and it'll uh, alleviate some of their normal cost so if you have a hundred dollar a month bill you get a couple solar panels your bill might only be sixty dollars a month all right maybe it takes forty percent of your electricity bill away or twenty percent something like that some people are able to net meter all right and what that means is they're making more energy than they're using so they become literally their own little power plant and they will put that energy back on the grid so if you take a look at this picture here you have a meter on the side of your house all right, and that measures the electricity flow into your home so when energy comes into your home electricity it'll flow through your meter all right, and your meter will have a little spinny wheel on it and it spins as you're using energy all right, so when you turn your dryer on your meter will record that electricity use so that's how a power company knows how much electricity you're using. All right, they'll come out and read your meter. Now, someone who's net metering is making more energy than they're using. So the solar panels will collect that energy, all right, and the family, the household will actually be able to use that electricity, but because they're using more than they need, some of that energy will actually go out of their house through their meter and out onto the grid. So their meter will actually spin backwards. That little spinny wheel will actually spin backwards. And it will be recorded that they're making energy rather than using it. So instead of a bill from the power company in the mail, you'll get a check. So some people are actually able to get paid for the amount of electricity that they produce. And this should sound somewhat attractive to you. And some people are doing this. All right, so think about net metering as you move out into the world and start building your own homes and buying land. Okay, the last thing to talk about here with solar energy are passive systems. So, so far we've talked about active systems where machinery and mechanisms are used. All right, these are now strategies that take 
that use the sun's solar energy to reduce the amount of electricity we need or to provide heat in our homes and ways to use solar energy to our benefit. All right, these are passive systems that use no machinery. So if you look at this house here, all right, there's a lot of passive strategies that are used. The, if you notice here, there's a lot of lines of sunlight coming into this home. So this house has specifically designed roofing strategies here. This roof here on the first floor actually extends out to provide a little awning. All right, and the same thing with the top second floor roof. It extends out to provide a little bit of an awning. Now what that's doing is it's allowing in the winter time the low sun angle to pass into our building or in heat the second floor and the first floor. We're allowing solar energy in in the winter time but at a little higher angle in the summertime that solar energy will be blocked. All right, and It'll actually keep our house cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter time. All right, that's just by building a little bit of a roof here to allow sun in in the winter and keep sun out in the summer. All right, that's a passive strategy. Another one would to be would be to use a mass floor. All right, there's certain surfaces out there like brick, concrete. All right, just to name two, a mass floor will take the heat energy from the sun, and as it strikes those surfaces, it'll be absorbed. This is over at the Connections Building. We have a mass floor in the Connections Building. So energy is absorbed, and then all day and all night, that energy is re-radiated into that room. So we're allowing sunlight in to be absorbed, and then allowing it to re-radiate and heat the airspace within that room, making us rely less on fuel oil or other types of ways to heat this room. All right. Over at SAVE, we have a mass floor, and on the coldest days of the year in February, it could be negative 10 outside. It's never been below 45 degrees inside of that room. All right, so these are just a couple of passive strategies that are out there. All right, there's lots and lots and lots of them. The last one I'll give you is the solar hot water heater. Okay, you might see some of these on people's homes. You might have mistaken them for solar panels, but what we're talking about is a hot water heater. In your basement, um, most, people, most people have them in their basement, is your hot water tank. It's a giant tank that when you want hot water in the shower, the water inside that tank heats up, and it is then transferred through pipes to your shower. All right, but most people have either an electric hot water heater or a natural gas hot water heater. This hot water heater is going to take advantage of heat and energy from the sun to heat our hot water so that we can use it when we need it. And here's how this works. So at all seasons of the year, you can have this on your roof, all right, and it's literally a box with a black background, and I'm looking at the one in the top right here, the flat plate collector. All right, so the black background um, is actually going to absorb energy. So sunlight is going to come in through the glass top here and get absorbed by the black background. All right, that energy will re-radiate and heat a series of pipes within the flat plate collector. And in those pipes are where our water is going to flow through. So the heat energy that was absorbed by the flat plate collector is re-radiated and transferred to our water. Okay, and then it just has to flow through pipes um, using gravity in the case of a system that's on your roof. All right, so there's no electricity used there. All right, and then it goes to our showers or our sinks, wherever you need hot water. All right, so in this case, we're not using any electricity, only a little bit for any pump that you might need. All right, but we're using no electricity, no natural gas to heat our water um, when we need it. All right, and this is great because a lot of us have hot water heaters in our basements, and it takes electricity to pump that water all over our homes and it takes a lot of electricity to keep that water warm so that it's available when we want it. All right, Many times we're not even at home and our electric is still heating the, that water just in case we stop in at home and turn the hot water on. In this case there's always water available ready to go so when you turn it on um, it's there for you. So. That's a little bit about a solar hot water heater, another great passive way um, with very little machinery or mechanism to heat hot water using the sun's energy and not any type of uh, non-renewable fuel source. 
Okay, so I leave you here with the idea that solar energy and solar technologies are still in their infancy. All right, given government subsidies, tax credits, and things like that, this type of energy generation really has tremendous amounts of potential to take off and take us into the future with the world's energy needs. And I encourage you to look into this a little bit further and have discussions with your parents and talk about the future of solar energy on Earth.